Hi guys, my name is the Spaz Devil and this is the no bullshit whisperer guide that you have been looking for. If you've been struggling to kill this boss, I am going to completely change the way that you fight this boss after you watch this video. You have come to the right place. Almost every guide that I've seen has said that this boss is easy, that it's brain dead. I'm here to say fuck these people. You might find certain bosses more difficult than other people do. So I am here to lay the law down and show you what's what. Now the first thing I'm going to talk about is the gear. Now if you are doing this for the quest, I promise you, Arim's is fine. Virtus is fine. Now I'm wearing full ancestral here just because that's what I have, but trust me, you do not need best in slot gear to kill this boss. This guide is going to help everybody at every different progression stage of the game, so put on your best in slot mage robes, whether it be Mystic, Arims, Virtus, Ancestral, just stick on your best mage robes. Now your best in slot boots are going to be the eternal boots, but if you don't have these, you can go ahead and use devout boots if you're struggling with the prayer. In the glove slot, Barrow's gloves will be fine, but realistically, you want to be using a tormented bracelet. Again, it's the best in slot mage bracelet, makes a huge difference to killing this boss. In the ring slot, I would heavily, heavily suggest an imbued ring of the gods. It's going to really help with the prayer bonus. And again, during the enrage phase, having as much prayer bonus as you can just means that you're going to find it easier not having to drink potions when you're dealing with all of the enrage attacks. But I'm going to make this all brain dead for you. And I mean it. In the shield slot, you know what I'm going to say. Your best in slot. Well, that's your best in slot. But I would suggest at least maybe an Elodinus Ward. You can also use a Mage Book or a Book of the Dead. Whatever it is that you've got, just go ahead and use that. Now, in the ammunition slot, you'll see that I've got a blessing. Now, I know that there is a method with the Venator Bow. I'm going to cover and talk about all of this. But while you are learning, I would heavily suggest using a blessing because we're going to be using something a little different while you're learning. Just trust me on this. In the next slot, absolutely get yourself an occult amulet. This thing is incredible. It gives such a difference to the damage and accuracy. It's about 800k off the GE. If you don't have that, again, just use whatever best in slot that you have. Could be a glory, a fury, whatever it is you need to use. Just use what you got to use. In the cape slot, you definitely want an imbued mage cape. It's not that difficult to get. It's the best in slot. Makes a massive difference to your accuracy and damage. So get yourself an imbued god cape. Now for the weapons, we're actually going to use two, a special attack weapon and your normal weapon. I'm using a Sang Staff because it does passively heal you. I understand it's 100 mil, you might not have this. A Trident of the Swamp, Trident of the Seas, a Powered Staff is absolutely what you want to be using, even a Warp Scepter, but use, you know what I'm going to say, your best in slot. Now, speaking of the spec weapon, you want to be using an Accursed Scepter. It has a special attack which lowers the Whisperer's magical defense, and you only need to hit it with a minimum of like a 1, and it will lower the defense by 15%. Remember to charge it with Revenant Ether. Put at least 2,000 Revenant Ether in, so you don't get to the boss and realize that the first thousands only charged it, and then you need more in there. Now let's go ahead and talk about the inventory. You'll see that my Sang Staff is in my inventory because we're going to be hitting it first with the special attack from the Accursed Scepter to get that magic defense down. So in your first slot, you're going to essentially have your weapon switch. Next, of course, you're going to need your Blackstone Fragment. This will allow you to enter the Shadow Realm. So you have to have this with in order to kill the Whisperer. You will have this from the quest. Okay, let's just take a minute to talk about the range weapon. Now, the best range weapon to bring with, and what you'll see me use in some example kills, is the Venator Bow. Bring a blowpipe. It means that you can have a Rada's Blessing on or something to help with your prayer bonus. While you're learning this boss, just trust me and just bring a blowpipe with you. Now, let's talk about the Imbued Heart. And I know, it's 100 mil. Spaz Devil, this is meant to be a guide for everyone. Don't worry, I've got you covered. I've got a replacement for you. But I'm just telling you, if you've got an Imbued Heart, this thing is absolutely incredible. Not not actually the imbued heart, the saturated heart. Thing is absolutely insane. So I want to thank Nasty for lending it to me. His name's going to be on screen. Go ahead and spam him on the private message and just say thanks for lending your boy Spaz a saturated heart for this video. Now, if you're doing this just for the quest version of the boss, you only need one or two super restores with you. But this is ideally what your inventory is going to look like when you get comfortable and you want to do multiple trips of getting five, six, seven, eight kills per trip. Now, for the food, anglerfish are the best, depending on your hit point level. But if you don't want to use anglerfish, if they're expensive, you can go ahead and use manta rays or you can use sea turtles. They are an incredible low-cost option for food. 
Now the great thing about this boss is if you do everything perfectly, you take basically zero damage. You might only need one or two bites of food just to maybe heal up in between kills. If you're doing this for the quest version, just bring extra food. That's all I can tell you. Now for teleports, you're going to want a one-click teleport away because if you mess up, this boss will kill you quicker than you can possibly imagine. So I have house teleports. Now there are multiple ways to get to the Whisperer. We're going to talk about that in a second. Fastest way to get to the Whisperer is with the Ring of Shadows once you actually get the tablet drop from the Whisperer, which is like a 1 in 28. Now if you don't have the Ring of Shadows, you can go ahead and bring a Lazar teleport. Finally, you are going to want to bring a Book of the Dead and the runes to cast thralls because you don't need to freeze this boss. There is a method that completely avoids freezing the boss when she walks towards you to melee you. I got you covered, but thralls are really going to help. If you don't have thralls, well, you don't really need any ancient runes, to be honest with you. Just bring extra food or extra restores, but we're going to skip the melee phase. Now, for your quick prayers, you are going to want to have Augury on, basically. If you don't have that, just use Mystic Might. Honestly, while you're learning, Mystic Might will actually do the job, especially for the quest version of the boss, and it means that you're going to go through a lot less prayer. But when you're comfortable, go ahead and use Augury. Now, for those people that do not have an imbued heart, bring with you a Forgotten Brew and pair this with the Preserve Prayer. Do not bring a Divine Magic Potion or anything else. If you do, you are fucking lame bring a forgotten brew it basically is a poor man's imbued heart this thing is amazing now in the description to this video i am going to give you game changing tiles and explain everything for you you are going to be amazed at how much easier this is going to make your experience now the blue tiles on the side are not spots that you need to worry about this is just for your orientation you want to always be starting the boss fight on the south side of the room so i've got the blue tiles there just to orientate myself a little bit better i'm going to light up all of these gray tiles so you know exactly what i'm talking about they are now green these are what i call the knight tiles now if you play chess you will know that a knight moves in an l shape now every single time the whisperer does three of its attacks it could be magical range she will fire these tentacles at you that you need to get out of the way now as the fight progresses the tentacles can either come at you horizontally or diagonally so you have to move in different ways to avoid them well not with these tiles with these tiles you can just move between any of these squares as long as you're going from either an outside square to the middle you will never ever get hit by the tentacles in between attacks and again during the example kill i'm going to explain it and show you and it's going to be really easy for you now when you actually start the fight the whisperer will knock you backwards now look at where my character is now these squares are perfectly positioned so that if you wake the whisperer up from the south side she will knock you backwards perfectly into position so that you can start using these tiles again i have made this guide the best whisperer guide on youtube this is the one that you guys have been wanting this is going to make this easy for you next let's talk about the safe tiles and how they work after the whisperer does a special attack she's going to try and freeze you and then walk at you and deal massive melee damage now if you run to either of these safe tiles and it will depend on which special attack you've come out of again i'm going to explain everything for you so do not worry basically run to the designated safe tile and this is where the melee distance is is going to end this is where the whisperer is going to stop walking now these are set up perfectly so that you can basically run to them when you get to the safe tile that's when you want her to freeze you and while you're frozen you are going to spam click back to the triangle tile set up to avoid the attacks but for the enrage phase which we're going to talk about later you're going to use the yellow tiles at the back of the room now during the enrage phase she hits you from all different angles she's going to hit you from diagonals and horizontals but somebody cleverly figured out that if you actually have these yellow tiles set up at the back of the room she will only attack you from horizontal patterns which means you can just run or walk between these three tiles and you'll never ever get hit during the enrage phase it's crazy should the whisperer kill you and trust me it is going to happen a lot during this grind i'm just going to show you where your gravestone is going to be i'm assuming you probably know where this is already because if you're watching this boss guide you might have died a couple of times already basically where the rope is to go down into the undercity your gravestone's going to spawn just there so this is where you're going to get your items back 
Now, I didn't feel the need to explain how to get here just because you have to do this boss as part of the Desert Treasure 2 quest. So again, if you're using the quest helper or you're just following the quest guide, you're going to know how to get here anyway. Now, what I will mention again is that the Lazar teleport, the ancient teleport tablet will take you right on top of the ice mountain. It means it's literally a 30 second walk to get back to the Whisperer. And the Ring of Shadows is, of course, the quickest way to get here. It will take you straight into the Lazar Undercity. Now, this is nasty actually who just called me a fucking noob he's the guy that loaned me a saturated heart so thank you very much for trolling my video again his name is going to be on screen just go ahead and troll the fuck out of him and just send him lots of private messages calling him a dirty little virgin okay it's time for me to show you a perfect kill now you will notice that i'm wearing Virtus. now the reason why is i was doing so much damage with ancestral against this dirty little whore that she was skipping the melee freeze so essentially if you do two too much damage to her before the first special attack she will actually not freeze you at all and go straight back into your attacks so i'm going to explain everything which is good to, to position yourself the right way but don't worry i'm going to explain it all so i went back to the vertis um in order to record this clip because i needed to make sure that i get that melee freeze for you on camera so that i can explain exactly how it works now the way we start every kill is we're going to spawn a thrall once that's done you are going to hit your saturated heart or you are going to drink a dose of forgotten brew you're then going to make sure your accursed scepter is equipped that your special attack is selected and that your prayers are on once that's all done you can go ahead and wake her up and she's going to knock you back into the safe tile all you're going to be looking for is a decent xp drop as soon as you see a decent xp drop from that first hit you should really land the special attack almost every single time if you don't just click special attack again and just make sure to move every three attacks now she's going to attack you with either mage or range. Now if it's magic, it's going to look like a blue magic attack. And if it's range, it's going to look like a red dart. Make sure you are praying correctly and wait for her to do three attacks. Once she has hit you with three attacks and you've prayed correctly, you can then go ahead and click to one of the safe tiles after she's done those three attacks and those tentacles will never ever hit you. Repeat the process over and over again, making sure to pray correctly. And we do this until we get to the first special attack. Now the order she does the special attacks are going to be random but for this first one I'm going to show you this is the orb special where she spawns orbs on the ground. Now if you look at where my character is currently standing if you're standing on this tile the orbs will never spawn on the tile that you're on. Basically means that you won't be on a danger tile that you won't accidentally stand on one. So this is where you want to be whenever she does an orb attack. Now you need to click on the black stone fragment in order to see which orbs are safe and which ones are dangerous and all you're going to do is make sure to run over all of the green orbs now if you're set to run you can tile skip over the orbs okay so you can see me doing that right here don't attack the whisperer during this phase just make sure to run over all of those green orbs and make sure that they're all gone and then you will be taken out of the shadow realm automatically i'm also going to mention now that if you spawn a thrall in the shadow realm it's not going to carry over to the normal realm okay so you need to be very very careful with when you spawn your thralls if you want to get good dps after the special attacks over this is where she's going to try and freeze you so just go ahead and run over to the safe tile that i've marked i mentioned earlier that if you do too much damage to her she won't even bother trying to freeze you if she does start attacking you without even trying to move towards you or freezing you don't worry just means that you've done lots of damage to her just remember to stay calm keep your prayers correct and get back to the triangle tiles that we marked before the night tiles for the tentacle movement assuming that she does try and freeze you just go over to the save tile we've marked wait for the freeze attack to actually hit you and then just spam click behind you to one of these yellow tiles and you're going to be safe from all the melee damage meaning you didn't need to bring any freezes with you while she's wandering over with her shitty hair and her shitty attitude, you can use this time to actually spawn yourself a thrall. You may also want to have a sip of super restore and you can also hit her a few times while she's wandering over. Just make sure that just as she gets into melee range, spam behind you. And now I'm going to talk about these three tiles and how incredible they are. 
Now she's going to carry on what she was doing before where she hits you with three attacks and then you'll have to move. The only difference here is she's going to hit you now with either two range and a mage or two mage and a range. So just pay attention to your prayer switches. Now with these tiles, the yellow tiles, you can actually just move to any of the yellow tiles. You don't need to do a knight movement and you're going to avoid all the damage. For some reason at the south side of the room, she doesn't hit you with any diagonals. It's only horizontal tentacles, which means you can dodge them every single time just by moving to a different tile. Just continue doing what you were doing, attack her, let her do three attacks on you, pray correctly, and then move to one of the other yellow tiles. Just do not step within melee distance or she's going to do basically an instant 60 damage to you with two hits of like 25, 30, so 50 to 60 damage. So just make sure to avoid that. Now, similar to the Leviathan, the attacks are going to register on your character when they actually hit you and not when the animation starts. So what you want to do really is have your audio on and when you hear the ding of the attack hitting you, that's when you should be swapping prayers. This is going to really help you as well. Now, the next special attack that we're going to look at is called the Pillar Special Attack and I've got some awesome little tricks for you here. Make sure to hit your Blackstone Fragment once again to put you into the Shadow Realm and then instantly spawn a Thrall in the Shadow Realm and I'm going to explain why. To deal with the special attack, you need to be behind the pillar with the lowest health and then she's going to do a scream and the pillars are going to start to get destroyed. Now, what you can actually do here is when you see her make the animation, the attack is already registered. So you can click her to attack her in between moving between pillars and that's going to get your thrall to start attacking her as well. So it's just going to do you extra DPS. So all you need to do is make sure that you are always in front of the pillar that has the lowest health and the the more you do this, the, the better you'll get at it. Just make sure that you're not moving too far between those pillars, knowing which one you need to end up at. Now she's going to freeze you again. Now, after the pillar attack, typically you'll always be on the north side. This is absolutely fine. Just make sure that you run over to the safe tile that we've marked. Make sure that that freeze attack hits you while you are on the safe tile. And as she's moving towards you, again, you can drink a restore, you can spawn another thrall, but you want to spam click to get to the next set of the three tiles that you can continue dealing with her attacks. Now the next three attacks are going to be exactly the same as the last. It's going to be two mage and one range or two range and one mage. She's only going to start alternating before she gets to the enrage phase. Now the final special attack to deal with that we're going to talk about is going to be the ghost special attack. Now this one is really simple. As soon as you see her throw the ghost out into the room, you know it's going to be a ghost attack. Always click either your venator bow or your blowpipe first before you click the blackstone fragment what this will do is actually equip the blowpipe or the venator bow on the same tick that you actually go into the shadow realm. Very similar to when you eat uh, a kawamba hamanamanam after you eat another piece of food, the tick eating method does the same thing here. Now you are only going to attack the ghosts that say Vita. Now, if you're using a venator bow, you'll actually go ahead and get all of them within that little cluster. But honestly, for practicing, just use a blowpipe, okay? And just get the ones that say Vita. As soon as you hit the Vita ghosts, you run to the south side of the room, getting ready for the freeze and getting ready to get back on those yellow tiles. Let the miserable bitch freeze you again and while you are frozen you can go ahead and spawn another thrall. You can make sure that your health and that your prayer is all topped up and you have a sanity meter at the top. Now I've not touched on this yet because if you're doing everything perfectly it won't matter but on the sanity meter if your sanity drops to zero you will take damage. So you need to be getting ready to go into the enrage phase with realistically at least like 50-60% sanity just in case you make a mistake. Now, once you are back onto the yellow tiles, you're going to go back into the dodging the attacks and moving just like we have before. The only difference here is she's going to alternate this time. So she's going to do mage, range, mage or rage, mage, Ra I can't even say that, but you know what I'm trying to say. She alternates her attacks as you can see here. Now, when the Whisperer's health gets to zero, she's going to go into the enrage phase and I'm going to tell you the most efficient way to deal with this so number one number one most important is she's always going to start with range okay she's going to do two range attacks 
then two mage attacks, and then just keep repeating. So it's going to be two attacks each time, and the attacks are going to be a lot slower, and they are consistent. The only difference is she's going to be spawning tentacles literally every couple of seconds this time. As soon as you see the Whisperer's health reach zero before she regenerates for the enrage phase, make sure that you are on the furthest tile away from her. Now, you're not going to have a lot of time to deal with this. You're just going to have to practice. Be on the furthest tile away from her. Make sure protect range is on. Make sure your prayer is topped up and spawn a thrall as soon as you go into the shadow realm. You're going to go into like an enrage realm, okay? Spawn the thrall as soon as you see your screen black out because the thrall's gonna help you now the timing for this is a little bit weird i'm not gonna lie to you it is difficult i'm not gonna be an arsehole here telling you it's brain dead and it's really easy it will take you a good few attempts to get the timing down but what you're going to do is you're going to walk one tile at a time towards her and on the tile as soon as you click the tile where you're going to be the nearest to her that's when you're going to attack her and then immediately click back to the first tile so you're going to like walk forward then walk back two walk forward two walk back two but you're going to go straight back to the original tile you can see me doing it here and after a bit of practice you're going to get it now as long as you keep moving and keep your prayers changing to the correct prayer you will take zero damage if your sanity runs out and you get hit a couple of times and mess it up just teleport away the same goes for if your prayer runs out the more you do the boss the better you're going to get with it the more you're going to be able to drink potions in between you're going to be able to correct yourself from mistakes but while you're learning if you take hits during this stage and you think you're gonna die just teleport away trust me don't try and save it now in a nutshell that is everything that you need to start tackling this boss this is my no bullshit guide i know it's a long one but i wanted to make sure that i did the very best whisperer guide that i possibly could so i really hope you've enjoyed it i'm gonna end this with a non-slowed down example perfect kill just so that you can watch it get familiar with it see how i'm moving and then you got this go and get that siren staff go and get those versus pieces and I will see you guys on the next one. I am the Spaz Devil, and I am your no bullshit expert. Take care.
Oh. <laughs> 